friends very good afternoon is audio video fine welcome to the ENT segment I welcome all my FMG students Vita, and uh, I am very happy that after this examination you must have realized the importance of class notes each and every word even if you open the topic of notes the first line of the chronology was the MCQ in your examination so let us discuss with the question number one the MCQ in front of you every student a 35 year old woman coming with a complaining of hearing in the right ear which was slowly progressive clear so now just let us discuss each and every important keyword given by the examiner patient was having tinnitus which was pulsatile so just remember one important concept data pulsatile tinnitus given reddish mass given behind tympanic membrane always going in the favor of glomus tumor now all the FMG students now you're going for the next milestone that is your neat examination just remember this point learn the art of ruling out the options C S O M which word will be there will be key word of ear discharge patient will be examiner will be giving the input very good very good Dr. Anand that is option D is the best possible answer in this MCQ now just try to learn better if the examiner is giving you persistent ear discharge patient is having persistent ear discharge with perforation either in the upper part or lower part of tympanic membrane. I will be going for C S O M. I hope you are getting my point. So, what will be the key word for A S O M? There will be red tympanic membrane again, but it will not be pulsatile mass behind tympanic membrane. The examiner will be giving you cartwheel appearance that will be entirely different from this type of appearance which is seen in glomus tumor. Glomus tumor, the mass will be only in the, the tumor coming from the lower half what we call it as we use a word rising sun am I understandable arising sun but in case of ASOM that is cartwheel appearance the appearance of the tympanic membrane will be like this try to appreciate this keyword this type of appearance I will be going in favor of ASOM now if again red tympanic membrane is given and the history say it is pregnant female with complaining of hearing loss with a maternal history that I will be going for autosclerosis I hope you are getting my message persistent ear discharge with perforation CSM option A bulging tympanic membrane high grade fever cartwheel appearance ASM now question is mastoiditis if the examiner is making the diagnosis of mastoiditis he will be definitely giving you some finding of external auditory canal where the posterior wall is bending down I want every student should update in the chat box very nice very good better it is autosclerosis pregnant female maternal history so now which sign I am showing you if answer is D option uh, C option if say the uh, uh, finding is going in the favor of C option which finding will be given by the examiner the examiner will give you this fine image not at all he will give you posterior wall bending down can you tell me what is a posterior wall bending down known as posterior wall of external auditory canal yes all my FMG students beta posterior wall bending down hallmark finding of mastoiditis what we call it as sagging of the canal I hope you are getting my point it means my eyes should be searching the keyword we should search for the keyword so if the keyword is given reddish mass pulsatile tinnitus rising sun sign I'll be going in the favor of glomus tumor which are the other important sign you should be confident of brown sign what is brown sign blanching over the tympanic membrane if I exert the pressure if I increase the pressure on the tympanic membrane there will be blanching of the tumor we use a word brown sign what is the treatment I will be going for surgery clear and neat examination I am confident all my FMG students you will get your dream branch in neat examination and what is the MCQ expected if this patient is there which of the following is not a part of treatment so always remember in glomus tumor we are not using interferon clear so we it is not having any viral association so it is not associated with any virus therefore antiviral will not be indicated so answer to the first MCQ is going with option D that's clear coming to the next one in view of mucomycosis the least possible cost should be clear so recall choices the examiner was giving you some diabetic mucomycosis definitely one thing is damn sure it is your diabetic patient clear so I can rule out examiner is asking you the least possible always make a habit of writing the word F or T false statement or true statement what you are searching for I am searching the false statement is mucomycosis associated with diabetes absolutely yes so this cannot be the right answer clear now neutropenia the again is a predisposing factor for mucomycosis which have a special affinity for the blood vessel why this necrosis why, why, why you can appreciate a necrosis in every corner why because of blockage of the 
blood vessel so always remember it have a special affinity for blood vessel prolonged use of steroid again one of the predisposing factor for mucomycosis but prolonged broad spectrum antibiotics nowhere related with mucomycosis but among the four option if i want to choose the least common i will be going for c option so the answer should be in this mcq answer will be broad spectrum antibiotics is least associated with mucomycosis clear what is the important point it is having special love for the blood vessel therefore therefore there will be no pain once the necrosis is there there is no pain there will be no bleeding very important mcq for mucomycosis just remember the patient is having anesthesia over the face no pain examiner can give you which of the following is the least common finding of mucomycosis and they can give you one option severe pain over the face absolutely no clear no bleeding no pain will be there what is the drug of choice everybody knows it is liposomal amphotericin b clear so these are the three important concepts of mucomycosis so right answer to the mcq number two will be your antibiotics least common clear coming on the next one this mcq i was talking about external contour of the nose is maintained by if you open if you open the is nasal bridge if you open the notes on the very first line we have mentioned upper one third if you touch your nose upper one third is formed by bony part and lower two third is cartilage part better they have asked you straightforward simple mcq again these simple questions in fmg examination highlight the importance of revision beta please 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 focus on revision part whether it is fmg or neat examination beta simple class notes revise it multiple time multiple times clear so a simple question first line of the notes upper one third bony low two third cartilage what is the basic anatomy upper one third is bony anatomy department say call it as bony my physio department use a word olfactory area so upper one third is olfactory area low two third is cartilage part i further divide this cartilage part into two segment x and y i am just copying from my notes what is x upper is upper lateral cartilage and what is y y is your lower lateral cartilage so it is your upper lateral lower lateral now next level of anatomy upper one third straight middle one third straight and lower one third is inverted u shape so more difficult mcq will be if they ask you what is lower one third lower one third is lateral half of lower lateral cartilage beta this is bony part this is my bony part this is upper lateral cartilage this is lower lateral cartilage and which part of lower lateral is making lateral part so examiner can ask you what about the middle part middle part of right and left they combine to form this midline columella behind which we have nasal septum so just learn a nice anatomy upper one third is bony low two third is cartilage cartilage is further divided into upper one third a middle one third and lower one third up middle one third is upper lateral cartilage and lower one third is lower lateral cartilage lower lateral cartilage is inverted u shape clear that's so among the four option the best possible answer will be upper one third is bony and lower two third is your cartilage part so b option will be the best i want all the students listening to me please kindly update in the chat box with a clear so answer will be b option any query feel free to ask your queries clear coming to the next one in a patient of bell's palsy one of the easiest question with a bell's palsy first important point it is idiopathic palsy is a lower part lower motor neuron palsy and clear so we will be going it is not upper segment it is a lower part lower part of the nerve is involved so it will be complete paralysis entire face on the same side will be parallel not on the opposite side of it it will be d option clear it is idiopathic important point to be remembered then which part of the facial nerve is commonly involved is labyrinthine part is labyrinthine part clear so always remember in bell's palsy labyrinthine part is commonly involved idiopathic success rate of bell's palsy is around 85 percent if you start steroids with antiviral acyclovir if i give this combination to the patient in how many days within first three days the success rate is around 85 percent your need examiner can ask you if the patient is coming after three days will you prescribe yes i will prescribe but success rate will not be high as 85 percent i hope you are getting my point so this is again one of the simple integrated question of ent with anatomy bell spell see the patient will be having entire face on the same side will be paralyzed clear coming on the any query till now yes dr anand everything crystal clear all these students kindly update in the chat box any query related with the topic we can clear on this platform clear so these are the important points on the facial now 
PLC. Click coming to the next one. Again, one of the easiest question. What is the function of utricle? So now if you focus your eyes on this section from anterior to posterior, always remember beta. This is cochlea. And what is behind cochlea? Behind cochlea is saccule and utricle. This is utricle. And more posterior superior is my semicircular canal. I'll just try to learn now. This is nice anatomy from anterior to posterior. The most anterior is your cochlea. This segment is your cochlear segment. What is the function of cochlea? Function of cochlea will be hearing. Am I understandable? So if there is any issue in the cochlea, organ of cotta, I will be having hard of hearing, deafness. And this central part, this is my utricle, this is acute. And what they are related with? They are related with your linear balance. If my utricle is acute, what is the sensory organ? Utricle secule, sensory organ is macula. Always remember it is macula. And if there is any issue with the macula, loss of linear balance, patient will be having ataxia. And what about the semicircular canal? We have three semicircular canal. They are related with angular balance. And if there is any issue with the angular balance, patient will be having nystagmus, vertigo. Always remember. So which are the four important features of my inner ear? Hearing loss, deafness. One is your ataxia, one is your nystagmus, what I go. Longest canal is posterior and the shortest canal is your horizontal. Again, very important potential MCQ. Clear? So, answer to this question will be your linear balance. Clear? Coming on the next one. Which of the following statement is about inverted papilloma arising from the lateral wall is true. So, examiner is asking you to search the true statement. Now, just try to learn this concept now. Inverted papilloma, one of the most important tumor, one of the most important tumor for nasal cavity. Why? It is benign, having malignant potential. Just remember this point. So, if you go with the class notes, on the lateral wall, we have two tumors. One is your inverted papilloma and one is your squamous cell carcinoma. So, out of six tumors of the nose, Two tumors are coming from the lateral wall. One is inverted papilloma, that is a benign tumor having malignant potential, and one is squamous cell carcinoma. Both are coming from the lateral wall. And how we differentiate? Now you just tell me. Yes, I want everybody should respond in the chat box. How you differentiate inverted papilloma from squamous cell carcinoma? So the concept is radiology or histopath. On radiological examination, when I do radiology examination, both are coming from the lateral wall. Just try to learn better. This, the, both are coming from the lateral wall. They are invading which sinus? They are invading maxillary sinus. So they are invading your maxillary sinus. Whether it is inverted papilloma or whether it is squamous cell carcinoma, both will be entering. Both will be entering into maxillary sinus, and this maxillary sinus will help you to differentiate inverted papilloma. Inverted papilloma from squamous cell carcinoma. How it will differentiate? Beta, I have given you this flow chart. Mass coming from the lateral wall. I will be looking for. I will be looking for maxillary sinus. And if maxillary sinus is damaged, if maxillary sinus is damaged, it will be your squamous cell carcinoma. And if maxillary sinus is intact, always remember it. It is intact. I will be going for inverted papilloma. Just remember, clear, clear. So. Peter Dr. Yogesh, please kindly revise it. It is clearly mentioned I, how we differentiate squamous cell carcinoma from your inverted papilloma. It will be your maxillary sinus which will be helping me. I hope you are getting my concept clear. So, this is a typical presentation of inverted papilloma because you can see the boundaries of maxillary sinus nicely. You can appreciate all the boundaries of maxillary sinus nicely. So, this will be there. This is inverted papilloma. What is the other name of inverted papilloma? We call it as Ringer's tumor. Ringer's tumor. Age of distribution very important. It is around 40 to 60 years and it is unilateral concept. It is unilateral concept. If you appreciate this image now, again mass is coming from the lateral wall. It is going into the maxillary sinus but all the walls are damaged. So this will be very aggressive tumor. This is your squamous cell carcinoma. This is squamous cell carcinoma. Which are the tumors coming from the septum? Always remember, if examiner asks you about septum, it is capillary hemangiomas, it is cavernous hemangiomas and malignant cap capillary hemangioma. It is your malignant melanomas capillary hemangioma, malignant melanoma and papillomas. Inverted papilloma is coming from, inverted papilloma is coming from lateral wall. Papilloma is coming from septum. Papilloma is coming from septum. Clear? Just remember this point. Capillary hemangioma, malignant melanoma, how we differentiate? This is reddish. 
it will be reddish mass and if examiner is giving you some white mass it is a papilloma and if it is dark brown we go in the favor of malignant melanoma this is something related with the tumor coming from the nasal septum examiner is asking about lateral wall inverted papilloma and it is was one of the easiest mcq examiner is giving you the diagnosis examiner is giving you the site and is asking you the true statement so it is a benign tumor with malignant potential again one of the easiest question coming on the next one yeah, this is a repeat mcq from your uh, Central Institute management of the patient presenting with the following X-ray. Now, how we differentiate? Just remember this point. How we differentiate a coin, a foreign body, whether it is in the respiratory tract or it is in the digestive tract. So we have to focus on the AP view. AP view and lateral view. These views are different if the foreign body is in the trachea or foreign body is in the digestive tract. Just remember this point. Clear. So if the if this focus on your AP view, I always say focus on the AP view or just remember of one view on AP view. If ex you get this type of appearance which was given in the MCQ, always remember it is in the digestive tract, it is in the esophagus. And if the foreign body, if the examiner is showing you a foreign body on AP view is like a line, like a linear appearance, it is in the trachea. So just compare this image on the lateral view. It will be like this but in the ap view this type of appearance will be a part of digestive tract that is esophagus so uh, but i will be going for out of these four options obviously i have to go for esophagoscopy so the option c will be the best possible answer in this mcq clear so option c will be the best possible coming on the next one question number eight which of the following is associated with csf atoria beta this blender should not be there it is not rhinoria it is atoria it is not your nasal cavity if you have attempted the fracture roof of the nose this is a wrong answer am i understandable examiner was asking you about csf atoria now what this related with this is related with my skull fractures skull fracture temporal bone fracture am i understandable are you getting this point which we divide in two parts one is longitudinal one is transverse so just remember having this concept if this is my skull and the fracture line if the fracture line is coming from behind if the fracture line is coming from behind occipital area can you tell me in the chat box what is this fracture known as if the fracture line is coming from occipital area it is transverse fracture and if the fracture line is coming in the parietal area parietal segment squamous bone parietal bone this area this segment is involved we call it as longitudinal fracture therefore just remember when the trauma is coming on the temporal segment we use a word longitudinal so your tympanic membrane will be traumatized your middle ear will be traumatized i have conductive deafness with bleeding from the ear bleeding from the ear bleeding from the ear as well as csf atoria csf atoria clear and if the trauma if the always remember this point if the trauma is coming from the occipital area we have transverse fracture and what are the property of transverse fracture will be your sensory neural deafness just remember sensory neural deafness with vestibular symptoms vestibular symptoms again if the trauma is coming from anterior superior it is traumatized your temporal segment i will be having csf atoria bleeding ear conductive deafness if the trauma is coming from occipital region it will be leading to your sensory neural deafness so examiner is giving you the option penetrating injury to the tympanic membrane no it is not penetrate it is trauma it is some fracture to the temporal segment not penetrating injury to the tympanic membrane penetrating injury to the eyes again going battle sign yes what is battle sign echimosis below the mastoid segment in if just below the mastoid you will be seeing some bleeding spots that is related with your temporal bone fracture so option b is the best possible answer in this mcq clear those students who have attended option d beta take a strong message please read the op words last word very nicely so csf atoria it is something to do with ear clear so question number nine nasophageal angiofibroma again i always say one mcq from angiofibroma is always there a young boy which is the next line of treatment one of my favorite question which of the following should not be done biopsy should not be done why biopsy should not be done because it is a tumor of blood vessel because it is a tumor of blood vessel will not be going for biopsy so option a and option c can be ruled out 
option A, option C can be ruled out. Clear? Now, question, what is the treatment? Always remember, treatment of choice of angiofibroma. If you compare angiofibroma with nasophageal carcinoma, angiofibroma is your surgery. We go for surgery. In nasophageal carcinoma, we go for radiotherapy, chemotherapy. So, option D, again, going against angiofibroma. So, option B is the best possible answer. We'll be going for CT with contrast. Clear? So, now what will be the important finding? What is a key word for angiofibroma? Always expect very good, very nice. Every student updating in the chat box, just remember it is frog face deformity. So, my FMG students, just remember this key word will be in the MCQ. This was straightforward. They have asked you which of the following finding, which of the following is the next step in the management. Examiner can give you this image. They can ask you next step in the management. I will be going for CT examination. What you will see on CT examination? Anybody, any student who can write in the chat box which finding will be there on the CT examination? Again, can you appreciate the posterior wall of maxillary sinus? Posterior wall of maxillary sinus bending down, going down. We call it as Hallman Miller sign. We use a word Hallman Miller sign. Clear? So this is a finding of CS here, angiofibroma. Angiofibroma. This is your tumor coming from which foramen? Sphenopalatine foramen. Sphenopalatine foramen. Just remember. Clear? So just try to appreciate the importance of options beta. Option A and option C never done. Is avoided in angiofibroma. Chemo radiation, something to do with nasophageal carcinoma. So your notes should be revised properly. Very good, beta. It is also known as enteral sign or it is your Holman Miller sign, posterior wall of Magnus bending down. I always say in my lecture, posterior wall bending down. It will be in mastoiditis, it will be in angiofibroma. In mastoiditis, the posterior wall of external auditory canal is bending down. Now, can you appreciate from in the first MCQ, I'm trying to compare the things, beta. Red tympanic membrane, it can be glomus tumor, it can be ASOM. This will be possible when you revise your notes multiple times. But I request all the students listening to me, just come out of that COVID era. Now we can't afford running behind quantity. We have very limited time in which we have to complete our notes and revise multiple times. And all those students who are confident of getting awesome ranks in this FMG examination, awesome marks in FMG examination, beta, just focus on the revision part. Revise multiple time if you want a good rank in neat examination, upcoming examination. Clear? Coming on the next MCQ, question number 10. Again, nothing can be more simpler than this. They have asked you something about congenital defects, brachial arch defects. So, obvious we are having important brachial arches which lead to the development of your head and neck and which brachial arch is commonly the question if the examiner I, I, I discussed this question with many students who appear for the exam some students were saying that they were asking most common congenital if the word most common it will be second second brachial arch are commonly involved but if the examiner is asking you failure of which of the following arches so it can be all of the above i hope you are getting my point beta it can be second third fourth but if they ask you most common most common will be second clear just remember this important point clear coming on the answer will be in this mcq will be answer will be d option coming on this one of the again integrated question of ENT with radiology what examiner is showing you examiner is pointing out my examiner's beta i i feel okay you must have attempted this question right beta this is something if the examiner have given uh, arrow at this point at this level what is this area this will be your it model segment which cell of it model i am showing you very large big bulla it modalis. So, this was an easy question. If I want to make it a little bit difficult, I can ask you, what is this? This is bulla it modalis. This is maxillary sinus. Am I understandable? This is my turbinates. This is my palate. Always remember palate and anything which is very close to the palate is your inferior turbinate. These are inferior turbinate. Okay? So, this is maxillary sinus, which is opening where? It is opening into middle meatus examiner can ask you this was the central institute mcq the given sinus drains into it will drain into middle meatus so always remember the basic drainage of all the sinus this your maxillary sinus drains into middle meatus frontal sinus anterior and middle ethmoid while your posterior ethmoid open in the superior and sphenoid open in the supreme meatus. So, examiner can give a arrow at this point and they can ask you where it is being drained. It is drained into middle meatus. I hope you are getting my message behind this MCQ. Coming on the next one, question number 12. I love this question. Nicely prepared. A 35-year-old female was having a history of aspirin intake 
later she was having some breathlessness these symptoms are more most likely to do so this mcq was dedicated to which part of nasal cavity nasal polyps every year we get one mcq nasal polyps and what is the relation of nasal polyp with this patient the patient may be having severe headache because of nasal polyp and patient have history of allergy sensitivity to aspirin so i am talking about examiner was talking about samster stride samster stride i am understandable what is samster stride nasal polyp the patient will be having bronchial asthma history of bronchial asthma can be there and the patient will be having your nasal polyps and sensitivity to aspirin always remember this point let us rule out the option these symptoms are most likely due to the condition is related with if the examiner uh, last line will be the i will be giving you to answer in this mcq if examiner is asking you the given presentation is related with related with answer will be b option nasal polyps it examiner is talking about sam cells tried but if the examiner is asking you the pathophysiology it is due to if the examiner is asking you due to the last word keyword i will be going for option a the examiner is asking you what is the basic pathophysiology behind this reaction so i will be going for ig release i hope you are getting my message beta option a or option b can be the right answer drug interaction not at all there is only history of one drug so i can't go with the drug interaction absolutely go extrinsic asthma no i will be not going for this i will be going for either nasal polyps related with or i will be going for option a more chances answer a was the right answer clear so in this mcq a more than b will be the better choice and all these students listening to me can if there is any change in the option please kindly update kindly update in the chat box clear coming on the next one a patient with a diagnosis of carcinoma glottic t1n my first line of the lecture ca laring one of the most important topic examiner is giving you t1 if examiner is giving you t1 let us rule out the option both vocal cord normal mobility if the vocal cord are normal mobility it is t1 if the vocal cord are paralyzed both are fixed voc fixed vocal cord it will be t3 let us label the t status of each both cords are partially partially immobile sluggish movement impaired mobility all they are going in the favor of t2 always remember if you read the classification nicely unilateral partially mobile again going in the favor of t2 so answer the best answer will be option a so just remember if there is tumor on the vocal cord it is t1 and if the vocal cord are completely paralyzed we go for t3 and if the word partial immobile word is mentioned i will be going for t2 okay so this is a basic funda these are highly radio sensitive tumors success rate with radiotherapy is very high so always remember in t1 glottic tumors instead of surgery we prefer radiotherapy first line of treatment treatment of choice everything in case of t1 glottic tumor is your radiotherapy that's it clear coming to the next mcq patient in icu with the endotracheal tube which tube should be used during tracheostomy now just remember this point if the patient is in my icu for 3 weeks less than 3 weeks we prefer that we should go with the intubation but if the patient is going for more than 3 weeks we plan tracheostomy i hope you are getting the concept now if i am doing tracheostomy in a patient who is already having endotracheal tube which tube will be the best so let us rule out the option metallic tubes nowadays we are avoiding the metallic tubes clear poly your pvc tubes now out in pvc endotracheal tube cannot be the right answer clear so option d already the patient is having the endotracheal tube so option a and d we rule out now question is whether we use cuff tube or uncuff tube and what is the advantage what is the drawback so let us compare beta these are three type of pvc tube plastic tubes always remember this is my cuff tube can you appreciate the advantage of cuff what will be the advantage of this cuff it will reduce aspiration i hope you are getting my point this patient is in icu high risk of aspiration so i will be using a tube which will avoid reduce the chance of aspiration one option second it keep the tube in position it keep the tube in c2 in position what is the drawback of this type of tube is pressure necrosis of the trachea so this tube can lead to pressure necrosis therefore we always go for we have to deflate the cuff every 2 hourly for 5 minutes very potential mcq for your need examination cuff tube are the best tube so our right answer in this mcq will be your cuff tube 
uncuffed tube rarely used where there is no chance of aspiration clear now what is this third type of tube anybody who can write in the chat box what i am showing you what i am showing you this tube can you appreciate there is some opening some fenestration we use a word fenestrated tube we use a word fenestrated tube and this will be used for voice so just remember this is use for voice fenestrated tube option so other among the given choices it will be cuff tube Coming on the next one, which of the following is presentation of Rinke's edema? Now, what is Rinke's edema? What is Rinke's space? Rinke's space is the space just beneath the mucosa. If this is my lumen of the larynx, lumen of the vocal cord, and this is my mucosa, just beneath the mucosa, just beneath the mucosa, there is a superficial layer of lamina propria. Superficial layer of lamina propria. So, space between mucosa and superficial will be a Rinke space. And if there is a edema in this space, Rinke's edema, edema we use a word ring is edema which of the following is a presentation of ring is edema obviously the patient will be having change in voice dysphonia only during sleeping no the patient will be having dysphonia change in voice the voice so answer option will be a option clear this phase will not be there in this patient answer will be a option dysphonia dysphonia while sleeping I, it doesn't make any sense but recall choices so our best possible answer will be in the change in voices there what is the treatment always remember in rinkis edema we go for micro laryngeal stripping we go for micro laryngeal stripping is the best treatment for rinkis edema just remember for neat examination micro laryngeal stripping is done for two patient one is rinkis edema one is keratosis one is rinkis edema one is keratosis. So, in these two patients, we are going for micro laryngeal stripping. Coming on the next one, next MCQ. A patient who is teacher by profession, complaining with the hoarseness of voice, the best possible diagnosis will be there. Now, history of vocal abuse. Vocal abuse. The patient can have rinkis edema. Patient can have vocal cyst. It seems to be incomplete MCQ. If the examiner have clearly mentioned it is at the junction of one third, two third, I will be going for polyp and not you. Among polyp and nodule, history of vocal abuse, it, examiner have given mentioned the word teacher, uh, the patient is teacher by profession. Option A and B more probability. And among polyp and nodule, what is the difference? Polyp is unilateral. Nodule is bilateral. Polyp we have to do surgery and nodule always resolve of its own. Always make the formula polyp, they are unilateral. We have to do surgery. Nodule are bilateral. We are going for conservative management wait and watch we give voice rest anti-acid anti-allergy always remember so among the four option vocal nodule is a better choice better choice so b option will be the better choice okay vocal cyst very rare if we compare with the polyp and nodule normally laryngeal cyst are at aryepiglottic fold just remember this point aryepiglottic fold is the most common site for laryngeal cyst but vocal cyst a rare phenomena ring is edema again rare so history of teacher by profession given i will be going in the favor of vocal nodule if the examiner asks you more than one option can be right option a and b can be the better choices clear question number 17 every exam every fmg exam this question is repeated which now is responsible for the area above the vocal cord so just remember below the vocal cord if this is my vocal cord sensory supply below the vocal cord is my recurrent laryngeal now and above the vocal cord is internal branch of superior laryngeal now which also known as internal laryngeal now which is also known as safety now safety now of the larynx clear so these were the mcq very strong message behind the exam okay, beta revise 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 and all my fmg students beta don't waste a single second make a promise in the chat box okay we will work 24 into 7 we will try our best to crack the neat examination i'm understandable are getting this point and this year the, if you go with the results of dams all these students who were fmg students they crack good ranks in neat examination that only in the first attempt beta so never never have this type of perception okay we will prepare for one more attempt and then we'll be able to crack neat examination not at all better now the level of mcqs in fmg as well as neat they are at the same level so i feel okay, you people who are prepared in a nice way for fmg examination you are deserving students for neat so work hard and let us not waste a single second clear you can follow me on the instagram you can follow me in the telegram group for all the ent updates and thanks a lot for listening to me thank you beta. thanks a lot